What's up guys, we are back with a full slate of MLB action here on Sunday, June 9th. Nice winning day there on Saturday, guys, going 4-2 and two overall. We did not get off to a fast start there with Boston looking absolutely terrible against the White Sox. The Baltimore-Tampa Bay over came up a few runs short, but then we went on a tear, winning our last four bets in a row. We hit the Reds minus 116, they won a close one. We hit the Brewers minus 165, that was another close one, but then we got two blowouts to close the day, guys. Cleveland won in an absolute decimation, a shutout of the Marlins there and the Padres won very, very comfortably scoring a crazy 13 runs there to win 13 to 1 against Arizona. So a 4-2 and two day overall, we'll definitely take it. Let's keep things rolling here with a big Sunday slate. But before we get into the games, guys, first, do me a big favor and hit that like button. It's a great way to show some support for the channel and all the work we put in here every single day. If you're new, go ahead and subscribe. It's 100% free and can keep you from missing out on these picks. Our videos are sponsored by StompTheSpread.com. Click the link in the description to go over there and join our free emails and check out our top confidence plays on all the major sports. Comment below with all the bets you're looking at today and we will give you our best advice on all of them. We respond to absolutely every single comment, so let us know anything you want to say about my picks, these videos, or anything you see here. As always, our final picks will be in the pinned comment down below. Now let's get into our first game of the day, guys. We've got the Phillies taking on the New York Mets in that London series. The Mets definitely going to be looking to bounce back in this one. They're handing the ball in this one to Jose Quintana. He's 1-5 in five on the season with a 5.17 ERA. He's coming off a couple of serviceable starts. I mean, his last time out, though, did not look great. He only lasted four innings, gave up three earned runs, two home runs in that game to the Arizona Arizona Diamondbacks. He's given up a total of five home runs over his last three starts, which isn't great. Haven't been the easiest starts. I mean, he went up against the Diamondbacks, the Dodgers, and the Cleveland Guardians. So, you know, not the easiest teams to face. In his start before that, back on the 16th, it was at Philadelphia. He went five and a third innings, gave up four hits, two earned runs, no home runs in that one. So a fairly decent start there for him against the Phillies. It is a game that we did see the Mets eventually end up winning six to five in extra innings, but how much of that is his fault? We're not going to give him too much credit there. In general, guys, the Mets bullpen has not been amazing. It's been, you know, hovering around maybe just slightly below league average. I mean, they're allowing an opposing batting average right at 236. So, you know, not, not amazing stuff necessarily, but not a disaster. They're going to need to put up some offense here in this game. They only scored two runs in game one, and they haven't been having the best time against the Phillies in general. I mean, in their series against the Nationals, they went three games there in Washington. They scored nine, six, and eight runs, respectively. So very, very solid at the plate in that one. However, on the season, this team is 16th in the majors in runs scored, 15th in the majors batting 242 as a team. Like, this is just looking like a kind of average offense. And they're going to have to score some runs here against the Phillies, who killing it right now. Seven runs in the first game of the series did not seem to be bothered by the fact they were in London at all. They're hitting the ball in this one to Tijuana Walker, who's 3-1 this season with a 5.73 ERA. He's coming off a pretty middle-of-the-road start there against the light-hitting Cardinals, guys. He gave up five hits and four earned runs over five innings. He gave up two home runs in that game, so that's not great, especially against the Cardinals. His last time against the New York Mets was not a great start at all. I mean, he only lasted three and a third, gave up four hits, two earned runs, he gave up a home run. He walked two in that game. Game also, like, just not the best pitcher out there in general. I mean, the Phillies bullpen, definitely nothing wrong with that. I mean, they're second in the majors in bullpen uh, batting average allowed, only allowing a 219 batting average. So that's not bad at all. Their hitters obviously are looking great. We also see this team is very hot on a four game winning streak. They didn't hit the ball great in that, uh, you know, series there in Milwaukee, but, or not in Milwaukee, against Milwaukee, I mean, but, you know, they looked very good in game one of the series. So definitely give them some credit there. And in general, this has been one of the best offensive teams in the majors. Second in run scored, seventh in team batting average, batting over 250 as a squad. They're eighth in slugging percentage. They're fourth getting on base at a nearly 330 clip. So this is a very, very good offensive team. And looking at the numbers for this game, guys, we see the Mets at plus 120, the Phillies at minus 140. We've got an over under in this game of 10 and a half. So the odds makers very, clearly have very little faith here in either starting pitcher. And I can definitely understand that. We do see mixed trends. Uh, you know, the Mets are, are an over team. The Phillies are a slight under team. The Phillies are great at home, but, you know, obviously this isn't a real home game, but they do have the advantage of hitting last and all that stuff, so that is a pretty big deal if it ends up being a close game, but in general, guys, we're leaning towards the Phillies minus 140 in this one. I don't think we're going to end up with this game in the pinned comment. We just don't have enough faith here in Teal on Walker, but you never know. It could it could be a, it could be a fun game to play there. It's like a 9 a.m. start or something like that, central time, so you know, have fun watching that game, but we're not going to be on it in a big way. 
Next on the docket, guys, we get the San Francisco Giants going on the road to take on the Texas Rangers. The Giants come into this game fresh off of a third straight win. They've won the first two games of this series, 5-2 to two and 3-1, to one, respectively. They're handing the ball in this one to Keaton Wynn. He's 3-6 and six on the season with a 6.17 ERA. He's coming off the 15-day IL for this start. The last time we saw him out on the mound, he was getting shelled by the Dodgers and by the Colorado Rockies and pretty much everybody he faced. He was just straight up not having a good time out there. Maybe now that he's healthy, he'll be a little bit better, but we definitely have some big question marks about him. And additionally, the San Francisco Giants bullpen has not been great. I mean, they're definitely in the bottom third of the majors for sure. Just not a very good bullpen. Their offense hasn't been looking terrible lately. I mean, they scored three, five, and nine runs over their last three games, so nothing wrong with that. They're they're above average for sure. I mean, we were looking at a team that's sitting around 13th and run scored, eighth in team bat average batting nearly 250 as a squad nothing wrong with that getting on base at a 318 clip is also respectable so we could definitely expect them to generally speaking put up some runs but will they be able to put up runs here against the texas rangers we'll just have to see the rangers aren't looking too hot guys they've lost four out of their last five games overall they're 30 and 34 in the season handing the ball in this one to nathan evialdi he is two and two with a 2.70 era he's coming off a very good start there against the tigers where he went five and two thirds gave up three hits only a single earned run it was a home run he also struck out seven and walked none in that game so pretty impressive stuff we also see that the rangers are three and two over his last five starts so nothing to turn the nose up at there i mean he He's, he's looked good. Recently, he's definitely looked good. No complaints for me. He doesn't go super deep into games, which is a little bit of a concern. I mean, looking at the Rangers' bullpen in general, it's about league average, so you're not, like, terrified to hand them the ball necessarily, but, yeah, not, not you know, not a uh, not a bullpen that I'm super duper high on. You're not like, oh, yes, the Rangers' bullpen is coming in. Like, you know, they're fine. I mean, they are 10th in the majors in bullpen batting average allowed, so, you know, not, not awful. Not awful. This offense has been very inconsistent and are swinging some pretty cold bats over their last two games. Games. They've scored one and two, so three runs total over the first two games of the series. That is not great. This team is 14th in the majors in runs scored, 14th in team batting average, batting 242 as a squad. Yeah, just not quite the offense that we thought they might be earlier in the season. So looking at the numbers for this game, guys, we see the Giants at plus 136, the Rangers at minus 162. We got an over-under in this game of eight. We see the Giants are 15 and 19 on the road. The Rangers are 15 and 17 at home. We also see that the Rangers are now an MLB best to the under. They are 39, 23, and two to the under this season. We see that the Giants are a slight over over team so we're probably not too interested in the over under guys it's only at eight and uh yeah we're gonna be on the rangers in this game pretty convincingly i mean they should be in great shape here against keaton win who didn't look good before he went on the il and i don't expect him to look great here in his first game back so even if he's a little bit better i think they're in pretty good shape with evialdi on the mound give me the rangers minus 162 with a very solid chance to end up in the pinned comment next on the docket guys we're looking at the atlanta braves going on the road here to take on the washington nationals we saw the braves take the seven to three loss there in game three of this series so going into game four they're hoping they can come up with a split they're 35 and 27 on the season and they're handing the ball here to a very interesting young player we've got Hurston Waldrop out there on the mound he's going to be making his major league debut there on yeah it's going to be a Sunday start obviously and yeah I mean he was a first round pick he's only 22 years old so we, we'll see what he's got out there I mean you know it's exciting to see these young guys come out there but I don't expect this to be a skeins type of debut so we'll just have to wait and see lots of question marks there obviously I mean the Braves bullpen has been a little bit above average this season definitely I mean they're allowing a uh, batting average of 241 or so that's not bad and in general guys this offense is in a slump I mean they've scored three one and five runs respectively the game before that they got shut out by the Boston Red Sox just not hitting the ball great I mean they're down to 17th in the majors and runs scored they're ninth in slugging percentage but 14th getting on base and only a 311 clip like that's not great they're only batting 245 as a team like got a lot of questions right now about this offense offense and a team that's hitting the ball relatively well right now is the Nationals. They're up to 29 and 35 on the season, handing the ball in this game to DJ Hers. He's 0-1 this year with a 9 ERA, so that's obviously not great. He's only going to be making his second start of the year. He the first time out, guys, he got shelled by the New York Mets of all teams, so that's not a great sign. Four innings pitched, seven hits, four earned runs, one home run allowed. Like not a very good outing, and it was against the Mets. Definitely not as good of a hitting team as the Atlanta Braves, in my opinion. So, 
yeah, just not feeling great about DJ Hers out there on the mound. The uh, the Washington bullpen in general this season has not been great either. They've been pretty solidly below average, maybe down towards the bottom third of the majors. So that's also not a huge positive. They are swinging some decent bats right now, though. I mean, seven, two, two, one, and three runs. I know those don't sound like great numbers, but when you've got a seven spot mixed in there for the Nationals, that is great for them. They're 25th in the majors in runs scored, 29th in the majors in slugging percentage, 22nd getting on base at a 302 clip. Like, this is just not a very good offensive team. So, guys, it's not too surprising to see the numbers for this game. We see the Braves at minus 165. The Nationals at plus 146. We see an over-under in this game of nine and a half. Don't have a big lean on this game, guys. There's some pretty big unknowns out there on the mound in hers and uh, old Waldrop. I mean, maybe maybe we see a great debut there from Waldrop, and maybe we'll see the Atlanta Braves offense come alive here going up against hers. But the price is a little bit too expensive for me. I'm not too interested in the over-under either. I mean, if you wanted to take a look at maybe a weird overplay with these two pitchers out there, I guess you could. But we're going to be leaning towards the Braves minus 165 or just staying away from this game with so many unknowns out there. Next on the docket, guys, we've got the Minnesota Twins going on the road here to take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. We saw the Twins take yet another loss. They got shut out two games in a row now by the Pirates. They've yet to score a run in this series. We see the Twins are on a five-game losing streak. It looks like this streaky team is on another one of those bad runs. They're 33-31 and 31 on the season, handing the ball in this game to Bailey Ober, who's 5-4 and four on the season with a 4.94 ERA. He's coming off of a decent start. I guess we'll call it decent because it was against the Yankees. I mean, with five innings, gave up three earned runs and a home run while walking four and striking out two. So, he was definitely trying to be a little bit too cute, a little bit too careful out there. And yeah, over his last four starts, I haven't really been impressed, guys. I mean, he's given up three, six, two, and five earned runs over his last four starts. Ober not having a great time out there right now. And the Twins' bullpen in general is not one that we're super high on. I mean, they're certainly a little bit below league average. I mean, they're giving up a batting average of 242 against them, which is certainly not great. And the hitters are obviously on an insanely cold streak. They've scored zero runs over their last two games. They've scored 0, 0, 5, 5, and 1 run, respectively. Like, that is not great. Not swinging very hot bats right now. Obviously, guys, they're down to 17th in the majors in run scored. They're 25th in the majors batting 229 as a squad. Terrible, terrible things from that offense. So they're hoping they can get back on track here against the Pirates, who are cruising along. They've won four out of their last five games now. So that has to feel pretty good. They're up to third place in the NL Central, which isn't something I really had in the cards for this team after they went into such a long, protracted slump. 31 and 33 on the year, handing the ball in this game to Jared Jones, who's 4 and 5 this season with a 3.25 ERA. He's coming off of a very good start against the Dodgers, a shutout start against the Dodgers, where he gave up three hits, no runs, while striking out six and walking three over six innings. It was a bounce back from a poor start there on the road at Detroit, but he's pitching at home in this one, so we can definitely feel good about that. I mean, his last couple of home starts have been, or actually his last three home starts have been very, very serviceable. So pretty excited about that. The Pirates' bullpen in general, guys, has not been amazing necessarily. I mean, they're down there in the bottom third of the majors for sure. They're allowing a batting average of 240, which isn't fantastic, but they obviously have looked pretty good recently, so we'll give them some credit there. And the bats have come alive somewhat. I mean, they've scored four and three runs respectively in this series, but the pressure really isn't on you to score a ton of runs when your pitching staff is throwing shutouts out there. So, you know, maybe they're not exactly as locked in as they should be, but we've seen definitely some good things from this offense here recently. So we can kind of expect them to continue rolling along here and Looking at the numbers for this game, guys, we see the Twins at minus 102, the Pirates at minus 105. We see over unders of eight and seven and a half in this game. We see the Pirates are now up to 16 and 16 at home. The Twins are now down to 17 and 18 on the road. We see some mixed trends towards the over under. Not really interested in the over under in this game, guys, but we are definitely interested in the Pittsburgh Pirates minus 105. I think they're in a very good spot to get a win in this one with Jared Jones on the mound. Ober has not looked like himself recently, and the Twins offense is absolutely doing terrible right now. So. While I don't think they'll necessarily get shut out for a third straight game, I'm definitely going to be on the Pirates minus 105 at home in this one. Next on the docket, guys, we've got the Baltimore Orioles going on the road here to take on the Tampa Bay Rays. The Orioles got the shutout win there in game two, winning five to nothing. So they've gotten off to a great start in the series, winning six to three and five to zero. They're 41 and 22 on the season, handing the ball in this game to Grayson Rodriguez, who's six and two on the year with a 3.28 ERA. 
He's coming off of a very good start there against the Toronto Blue Jays, where he went six and two-thirds innings, gave up seven hits, so maybe that's not amazing, but only a single earned run, two runs overall. He gave up a home run in that game, but he had zero walks and four strikeouts. And yeah, I mean, he's looked very solid over his last five starts. I mean, I guess a questionable one there, a little bit against the Red Sox, gave up four earned runs. But other than that, he's looked very, very good. And that stretch includes a shutout, five and two-thirds innings against the Yankees. So the dude has been throwing the ball well. The Orioles bullpen has been very good this season in general. They're third in the majors right now in uh, batting average against. So that's definitely a big positive. And this offense is hitting the ball well. I mean, five and six runs respectively in their two games this series. Nothing wrong with that. We see Gunnar Henderson up to 20 home runs now. Like this team just killing the ball. Highest slugging percentage in the majors. Third in the majors in runs scored. Their top 10 in batting average still. Like no negatives really for this offense. I expect them to score some runs no matter who they're going up against. They're facing the Tampa Bay Rays who are 31 and 33 in this game. They're handing the ball to Zach Littell who's 2 and 3 in the season with a 3.56 ERA coming off of a pretty bad start there against the Baltimore Orioles. He went six innings. He managed to give up only three earned runs but he gave up 11 hits in that game and a home run. Not not looking the best in that start, guys. I mean, he's looked gettable in, I would say, at least three of his last five starts. He gave up six hits to the Oakland A's and three earned runs to them in the start before that start at Baltimore. So him being back at home is definitely something of a positive for him, but I don't think it's a guarantee of him having a solid outing. And the Tampa Bay bullpen in general is definitely bottom third in the majors. Not great, giving up a uh, opposing batting average of over 240. Just not a great bullpen, and their bats are obviously not looking very good at all. They've only scored three total runs in this series so far. They're down to 23rd in the majors in runs scored. They've been one of the worst slugging percentage teams in the majors all season long. That's not changing. They're below average in team batting average. Like, just not a good offensive team. So looking at the numbers for this game, guys, we've got the Orioles at only minus 135, the Rays at plus 116. Tampa Bay is 17 and 20 at home, which isn't very good. So we're going to be on the Orioles minus 135 in this one. I think they find a way to get the job done in this game. I love Grayson Rodriguez out there on the mound. No big concerns for me with him out there. So give me the Orioles in this one. Next on the docket, guys, we've got the Chicago Cubs going on the road to take on the Cincinnati Reds. We've seen the Reds win the first three games of this series. They're looking at just unstoppable out there right now, winning 8-4, 3-2, and 4-3. So the Cubs have been on the opposite side of all of those games. They're down to 31 and 34 in the season. They're hitting the ball in this game to show to Imanaga, hoping he can stop the bleeding. He's 5-1 this year with a 1.88 ERA, but he's coming off of back-to-back -back starts looking pretty bad, guys. I mean, he had that start against the Milwaukee Brewers, his first bad start of the season, where he gave up eight hits and seven earned runs over four and a third. Then he followed that up his last time out. Back on the fourth, guys, he got shelled by the Chicago White Sox. He went four and a third innings, gave up seven hits and five runs. Only one of those runs was earned, but he did give up a home run in that game. Just not his best start. Do we expect him to get back on track at some point? We certainly do. I think he's a great, great plus level pitcher, but definitely working through something right now. And the Chicago Cubs bullpen has only been like maybe slightly above average, like not a great bullpen. So we can't really trust them to like hold things down when he eventually comes out of the game. And their offense is looking terrible recently. I mean, they scored three, two, and four runs over their last three games. We don't see anybody hitting the ball particularly well for them right now. They're 27th in the majors, batting only 226 as a squad. They're below average average in on base percentage they're all the way down to 23rd in the majors in slugging percentage like this is just not a good offensive team right now and they're taking on a reds team that's hitting the ball maybe the best or close to the best they've hit it all season they've scored four three eight and 12 runs over their last four they're now on a seven game winning streak they're up to 20 or 32 and 33 on the season which is obviously great they're handing the ball in this game to frankie montas who's three and four in the season with a 4.00 era he's coming off of one of his best starts of the season he went seven innings at colorado so pitching at Coors Field, seven innings, only gave a single hit and struck out nine. He walked two in that game, but gave up no runs. Just looked like an absolute monster out there. And in general, guys, I mean, is the Cincinnati bullpen one we're super high on? Maybe not super high, but they're certainly above average. They're surrendering a batting, an opposing batting average of 237. So nothing wrong with that. They're they're looking like a slightly above average bullpen right now. So definitely give them credit. They're hitting the ball great right now. So that's a big plus. This team is just kind of firing in all cylinders right now. And I don't know if I really had this one on the bingo card. The Reds making some big, I mean, this isn't quite mid-season, but, you know, like some big surge here has to feel good they're up to second place in the nl central they are still six and a half games back at the brewers but still playing really well right now they're up to 12th in the majors and runs scored their league average they're getting on base at a 310 mark so nothing wrong with that 
Definitely looking at the Cincinnati Reds again in this game, guys. It feels like a bit of a trap. They're at plus 110. I think that's all due to Imanaga being out there on the mound. We're probably going to uh, probably going to swerve putting this in the pinned comment. I mean, having Imanaga out there is a little bit much to go against. Even though he's looked bad in his last couple of starts, I do think he's going to get back on track at some point, and this could definitely be the spot. But my lean in this game is definitely the Reds plus 110. I think they've got a decent chance of earning the sweep here, but I could also see Imanaga coming out there and tossing like a one hitter over eight innings or something. So not going to put it in the pinned comment, but my slight lean is the Reds. Next on the docket, guys, we're looking at the Cleveland Guardians going on the road to take on the Miami Marlins. We saw Cleveland get back on track there with an eight to nothing win in game two of this series. They're 41 and 22 on the year, handing the ball in this game to Carlos Carrasco, who's two and five on the season with a 5.66 ERA. It's coming off a pretty mediocre start there against the Washington Nationals. We also can't help but notice that Cleveland is only one and four over his last five starts. So that's not ideal. He's had his bright spots this season for sure. I mean, this guy is a big time veteran. He's 37 years old. He's been around the block a time or two, but how much does he have left in the tank? It'll be interesting to see. I mean, he had a good start at the Rangers the other day. He had a very respectable start at home against the Angels. So he's had his good outings for sure. Just his last time out was not one of them. And it's not like he's going up against a crazy good team in this one. The Cleveland bullpen has been very good. Definitely a top 10 bullpen in the majors. I mean, maybe not top four or five, but definitely top 10. And this offense figured something out there in game two, putting up eight runs. So it was nice to see Stephen Kwan get back on the, you know, on the right track there. He hit a two run home run. So that all feels pretty good. They're up to 7th in run scored. They're 10th in slugging percentage, which is definitely something nice. They're 11th in the majors getting on base at a 315 clip. They haven't been too consistent hitting the ball lately. I mean, they scored 8 runs. Then before that, 2, 3, and then 8 again. So like, you know, a little bit up and down, but you'll have that over the course of a long season. They're hoping they can score some runs here against the Marlins, who are coming off of getting shut out. They're 22 and 42 on the season. Handing the ball in this game to Trevor Rogers, who has straight up not been having a good time this year, guys. He's one. And seven with a 5.68 ERA. His last start was against the Texas Rangers. He went six innings, gave up six hits, four earned runs. He had a home run in that one. He's walked at least two in each of his last five starts. He had a start against the Brewers where he walked four that time. At, like, just, you know, not, not a super consistent guy. And yeah, I mean, once he comes out of the game too, then you're dealing with the Marlins bullpen, which to be totally honest, like maybe isn't quite as bad as I would have thought they would be. But I mean, a 268 batting average allowed against your bullpen is not something you're going to be super excited about. So not a lot of positives there for the Marlins. Obviously not a lot of positives for their bats. They've scored 0, 3, 3, 5, and 0, and 0 runs over the last few games. Like not swinging the hottest bats, not a very good offensive team. They're 29th in the majors in runs scored, 29th in the majors in on base percentage. When you're getting on base at a 289 clip, yeah, that's some pretty dark stuff, guys. They're also a terrible slugging percentage team, so just not a lot of positives for this offense. And looking at the numbers for this game, guys, I'm a little bit surprised to see them so close. We've got the Guardians at minus 106, the Marlins at minus 110. We've got an over-under in this game of 8.5. Cleveland is 19-14 on the road, so not terrible on the road. The Marlins are only 12-24 and 24 at home, so yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty pretty bad. So we're going to be riding with the Guardians minus 106. I think Carlos Carrasco will give them a good enough outing and the bats will keep going here for them to get a, a nice win there against the Marlins as the Guardians continue to try and assert their dominance there in the AL Central with the Kansas City Royals kind of breathing down their necks. Next up guys with the Milwaukee Brewers going on the road to take on the Detroit Tigers. The Brewers come into this game fresh off of a 5-4 win there in game two. They won game one of the series 10 to nothing. So cruising right along here. They're 38 and 26 in the season, handing the ball in the to Bryce Wilson. He has yet to figure in a result this season, and he's sporting a 3.35 ERA. His last time out, he came out of the bullpen to pitch five and two-thirds innings back on the third against the Phillies, so he's going to be pitching today on the ninth, so that's plenty of rest. He should be in good shape to make a nice long start if he can stay out there on the mound long enough in his last three starts, which have not been uh, necessarily amazing. I mean, he had a short start there against the Cardinals, which was fine. A short start against the Houston Astros, which I would say was kind of mediocre. A, uh, you know, not great start there against the Chicago Cubs back on the 29th. It was a game that we saw the Brewers win 10-6, to but it wasn't really his fault, guys. He went four innings, gave up six hits and four runs. He gave up a home run. He's going up at least one home run in each of his last five appearances. So, yeah, not super high here on Bryce Wilson. And in general, you can be pretty high on the Milwaukee Brewers' bull 
bullpen. I mean, they're clearly top 10 in the majors. They're giving up a 239 batting average, so nothing too terrible about that. The hitters have been looking good, guys. Five runs and 10 runs over their last two, but they looked terrible in that series at the Phillies. So that's a little bit concerning here at Detroit. Even though they've been hitting the ball well so far in this series, it could be a different story here in game three. The Tigers are 31 and 33 on the season. They've now lost three in a row, but they're handing the ball in this game to Tarek Skubal. He is seven and one this year with a 1.97 ERA. He's coming off of a kind of bad start for him, guys. He gave up a single earned run on seven hits over six innings at the Texas Rangers. In a game, we saw the Tigers win two to one. We also note that the Tigers are four and one over his last five starts with his like worst start over that span being a start against the Royals at Kansas City where the Royals are amazing where he went five innings he had six hits and four earned runs so he's looking really really good out there right now the Tigers bullpen in general guys is not necessarily something to write home about but they're slightly above average so give him some credit there and this offense is definitely due to put up some runs I mean they've only scored four runs over the first two games of this series they're not a great offensive team don't get me wrong definitely a bit below average but they are 19th in the majors in runs scored and 20th in the majors in slugging percentage they can put up some numbers they don't really have anybody that I'm particularly like terrified to see come to the plate but you know they're an offense that can generate some runs usually and they shouldn't have to generate a ton of runs here with Scooball on the mound looking at the numbers of this game guys we see the Brewers at plus 140 the Tigers at minus 166 we see an over under of seven and a half in this game which is pretty interesting even with Scooball out there on the mound, I think the over is worth somewhat of a look. With Milwaukee going 36, 25, and 3 to the over, that's an MLB best to the over number. We also see the Tigers are second best in the MLB to the over there, 36, 25, and 3 to the over. So I think you can definitely take a look at the over 7.5, especially on a day game on a Sunday. I think we could definitely see some offense in this one. In general, guys, I would say the value in this game is either the over or the Tigers minus 166, but in overall this isn't really a game that i'm super interested in i mean the tigers minus 166 is a little bit expensive and taking the over in a game with scooball out there on the mound seems a bit sketch so just go ahead and give me the tigers minus 166 as a slight lean and the over as a slight lean Next on the docket, guys, we've got one of the most hated teams in the MLB right now. We're looking at the Boston Red Sox going on the road to take on the Chicago White Sox. Boston, after winning game one of the series 14-2, has scored a grand total of three runs over the next two games. They lost 7-2 to two and then 6-1 to one yesterday. Did not see that 6-1 to one loss coming. Thought they would bounce back. They absolutely did not. They're giving Tyler O'Neill some time off to fix his ailing knee, so we'll see how that goes. They're 32-33 and 33 on the season now, handing the ball in this game to Zach Kelly, who has yet to figure in a result this season. He's going to be making a rare start after being normally a bullpen guy. He's looked pretty good out of the bullpen, don't get me wrong. I mean, a 2.00 bullpen at ERA. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. How long will he be able to go in this game? It'll be interesting to see. Back on the 25th, he did have a three-inning outing there against the Milwaukee Brewers. So maybe he's got what it takes to go deep into some games, but we'll just kind of have to wait and see here. A lot of unknowns here with how he will actually do the Red Sox. Bullpen has not been terrible. I mean, they're definitely above average in the majors, but they could have a lot of work to do if he doesn't go deep into this game. So we'll just have to see what, you know, what they can actually do out there. And the offense, man, got no faith in in this offense right now they are not putting up anything positive only three runs over the last 18 innings so not a lot of great things to say about the boston red sox right now the White Sox come into this game. They are playing good. I mean, won two in a row. They won 7-2 to two and 6-1. to one. They're only 17-48 on the season, though. Handing the ball in this game to Chris Flexen, who's 2-5 and five this year with a 5.19 ERA. He's coming off of back-to-back -back very good starts there, guys. He had a good start against the Toronto Blue Jays, going five innings, giving up only two earned runs. Then he backed that up with a good start at the Chicago Cubs, going five innings, giving up only a single earned run. He's just looking pretty good out there right now. He hasn't looked great consistently this season or anything like that. I mean, there's a reason he's got an ERA over five, but you know, not feeling terrible about him. We are feeling terrible about the White Sox uh, bullpen though. They're giving up a 271 batting average. So pretty poor stuff there. And they've just been one of the worst bullpens in the major leagues uh, this season. Maybe not so much recently, but definitely over the course of the season. And this is the worst offense in the major leagues, guys. No way to get around that. Despite the fact they've been doing well over the last two games, they are just the worst offense in baseball. They're dead last in every major category, just not a good hitting team. So looking at the numbers for this game, guys, we see the White Sox at plus 138, the Red Sox at minus 164. We see an over-under in this game of nine. Guys, I would surely think the Boston Red Sox can find a way to cobble together a win in this one. Will I be betting on them again in this game? I will absolutely not. We are fading this one for sure. Will not be on this game in any meaningful way. The Red Sox are a decent road team, blah, 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 all those things that would have led me, that led me to bet on them yesterday. Not 
going to be making that mistake and betting on them again today, though. Give me the Red Sox as a slight lean in this one, but I am staying away. Next on the docket, guys, we're looking at the Seattle Mariners going on the road here to take on the Kansas City Royals. The Mariners come into this game still looking for their first win in this series, and I mean, I guess we shouldn't be surprised with the Royals being such a good home team. The Mariners lost there in game two, eight to four. They're handing the ball in this game to George Kirby, who's five and five on the season with a 4.05 ERA. He's coming off of a good start there against the Oakland A's, where he went five innings, gave up six hits and two earned runs. He's also coming off of a very good start against the Royals back on the 13th. It was at home, not at Kansas City, but he went seven innings, gave up three hits and struck out six. He walked none and gave up no runs in that outing. So the dude has looked very solid in three of his last five starts. He did have a hard time at Washington and a hard time at Baltimore. So I don't know. It seems a little sketch here. He might also have a hard time at Kansas City. The Seattle bullpen comes into this game looking pretty solid. I mean, they've been a great pitching team all year long, so that can't come as a big shock to anybody. They're, they're top five in the majors, giving up a 217 batting average out of the pen. Absolutely no problem with that. Their offense has been pretty good in this series, honestly. Like, they've scored a total of 13 runs over two games, which is great for this offense. Not one of the better offenses out there, but they've looked good. Their pitching has just kind of let them down. So they're hoping the pitching can be a little bit better and the offense can keep things going here against the Kansas City Royals, who are now 39-26 and 26 on the season, putting some pressure there on the Cleveland Guardians for the top spot in the AL Central. They've won their last three games in a row. They're hitting the ball in this one to Cole Rangens, who's 4-4 four and four in the season with a 3.21 ERA. He's coming off of a great start there against San Diego Padres, where he went six innings, gave up only a single earned run. He hasn't given up more than two earned runs over his last five starts. He had back-to-back -back shutouts there against the A's and the Tigers. Then he gave up two earned runs to the Twins in a game we saw the Royals lose 4-2. to two. Then he had that great start against the Padres. So he's been looking fantastic. Also, the, uh, the, the Kansas City Royals bullpen has been pretty good, too. Definitely above average. Not a lot of complaints here about their bullpen. They're not, you know, not necessarily amazing, amazing, but they're good enough to you can count on them to get the job done. And this offense has been putting up great numbers. They've scored eight, 10, and four runs over their last three games. They've been having no trouble going up against a very good pitching team. And yeah, that just has not seemed to bother them. We've seen Bobby Witt Jr. hitting the ball great right now. And yeah, this offense is just cruising. They're tied for fourth in the majors and runs scored. They're fifth in the majors batting 254 as a team. They're also fifth in the majors with a slugging percentage of 412 like this team is just hitting the ball great right now so looking at the numbers for this game guys we see the Mariners at minus 102 the Royals at minus 112 we see an over under in this game of eight this is a little bit tough guys it's hard to bank on the Royals finishing off this sweep but it's not that hard guys Seattle's only 15 and 19 on the road we've seen Kirby have his struggles pitching on the road we see Seattle's only 15 and 19 on the road and the Royals are 24 and 10 at home yeah, guys, go ahead and give me the Royals minus 112 at home in this one with a very reasonable shot to end up in the pinned comment. Next up, guys, we've got the Colorado Rockies going on the road to take on the St. Louis Cardinals. We see the Rockies are currently up two games to one in this series. They won game three, six to five there. They're 23 and 41 on the season, handing the ball in this game to Ty Blatch, who's two and three on the year with a 4.54 ERA. He's coming off of a pretty mediocre start there against the Cincinnati Reds. Guys, he gave up 10 hits four earned runs. He gave up a home run in that game. His two starts before that were very solid though. He was at home against Cleveland. He looked really good and he was at home against the Phillies and looked very good in that one also. So it seems like he's kind of at home pitching at Coors Field there, which is pretty impressive stuff, but he struggled a little bit on the road. I mean, his start against the Reds was at home too. So like maybe we're reading a little bit into, too much into those home and away splits, but Ty Blatch has not looked terrible this season. And in general, guys, the Colorado bullpen has not been one of the better ones, guys. They're giving up a batting average of 269, which is not great and yeah definitely down there in the bottom third of the league for sure this team's been hitting the ball relatively well this series though they've scored six five and three runs respectively and they've they've definitely been holding their own here against the cardinals who come into this game sitting at 30 and 33 on the season they do not have a starter confirmed for this game which is a big concern for this team not having the greatest time with their pitching staff overall i mean in general, we see that they are only, uh, they're 19th in the majors with 21 quality starts. They're giving up a team batting average of 250. Eh, just not, not a lot of positives to look at here for the Cardinals in general in terms of their pitching staff or really in terms of their hitting either. Another big concern for this team, I mean, they, yeah, just, just not looking too hot out there. I mean, they scored five, eight, 
two and four runs over their last few games. They're 26th in the majors in runs scored, 20th in on base percentage, like just not a great hitting team. The problem that we're running into in this game, guys, is we see their numbers out and we see the Cardinals are minus 178. So clearly the odds makers are pretty high on whoever they think the Cardinals are going to put on the mound. So going to have to wait for a confirmed starter to give you guys a real lean in this one. The Rockies are only 10 and 24 on the road. The Cardinals are 14 and 14 at home. If we were going to see the Cardinals put just like some miscellaneous bullpen guy out there and they were just going to use their bullpen to pitch this entire game, we would definitely be on the Rockies plus 150, but we just have to wait and see who the Cardinals are actually going to put there out there on the mound before we can give you a real pick on this game. Next on the docket, guys, as we round into the home stretch here, we've got the Houston Astros going on the road to take on the Los Angeles Angels. We see these two teams playing right now. We see the Astros are up 6-1 to one in the bottom of the eighth inning, so they're in pretty good shape in that one. They won game one of the series 7-1, to one, so they're cruising along here taking advantage of the Angels. The Astros are going to hand the ball in this game to Justin Verlander. He's 3-2 and two on the season with a 3.63 ERA. He's coming off of a kind of mediocre start there against the Cardinals where his team did win 7-4, to four, but he gave up 7 hits and 4 earned runs and 3 home runs over 5 innings of work. That is not what they were hoping to get out of Verlander in that start for sure. His two starts before that though were very good. He had a little bit of trouble there with the Brewers, but then his start back on the 12th against the Detroit Tigers was excellent. So he's been a little bit inconsistent, but definitely seems very capable of taking advantage of those bad opponents. And the Houston bullpen in general, guys, hasn't been terrible this year. I mean, maybe not amazing, but definitely above average. They're giving up a batting average of 239. Nothing wrong with that necessarily. And they're hitting the ball a little bit in this series for sure. I mean, seven runs and then at least six here in game two of the series. So looking pretty good at the plate right now. And this team's been putting up great numbers offensively all season long. They haven't always translated into runs, but when you're the second best team in batting average and the fourth best team in slugging percentage, you're eventually going to put some runs there on the board. So they're hoping they can keep things rolling here against the Angels who are having a hard time so far in the series and a pretty rough time this season overall. They're handing the ball in this game to Patrick Sandoval. He's two and eight on the season with a 5.00 ERA. He's coming off of a good start there against the Padres and a pretty reasonable start there against the Yankees, but the start for that against the Cleveland Guardians. He did not have a great time. He only lasted three and two-thirds innings. He gave up eight earned runs. So yeah, he's been a bit inconsistent. And I mean, there's a reason he's got a five ERA, but like, like, you know, he had that good start against the Yankees. So he's capable of decent things out there. Looking at the Angels bullpen, guys, it has not been a great bullpen. Somewhere around 26th or something like that in the majors and overall like ranking, they're giving up a uh, 238 batting average, which isn't a disaster necessarily, but they're also not, not a great ERA bullpen. So not super high here on the Angels bullpen. And they're definitely going to end up out there with Sandoval on the mound. He's not going to go super, super deep into games. Usually seems like pretty much a five or six inning guy. So we'll see how they actually fare out there, but their offense is obviously spluttering and they're going to have to go against Verlander in this game. So a lot of questions here about the Angels. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Astros at minus 154, the Angels at plus 140, and over under of eight and a half. We see the Angels are 10 and 22 at home. That's an MLB worst mark at home. The Astros are only 10 and 17 on the road though. So not great there. I'm going to be leading slightly towards the Astros in this one, but yeah, this is going to be a no play for me. Verlander's just not consistently good enough. Sandoval's not consistently bad enough. Can't really trust either team's offense to put up runs or be terrible. So just going to go ahead and pass on this one. If you're forcing me to bet it, I guess give me the Astros. Next up, guys, we got the Toronto Blue Jays going on the road to take on the Oakland Athletics. The Blue Jays come to this game fresh off of a 7 to nothing win in Game 2 of this series. They're handing the ball in this one to Bowden Francis. He has yet to figure in a result this season, but he is sporting an ERA of 9.00. So not exactly where you want to be. His last time out came out of the bullpen. He's come out of the bullpen for his last four appearances. And they have not all been smooth sailing, guys. His last Last time out, he went three and a third against the Orioles, gave up five hits, four earned runs, and two home runs. So he's definitely in search of a bounce back. He's probably got to be happy to be starting in game. Maybe that'll give him a little bit of consistency, but we'll just kind of have to wait and see. I'm not super high on him for all the obvious reasons I just listed. And the Blue Jays bullpen is also not amazing. Definitely in a, bl a below average bullpen. They're giving up almost a 250 batting average against the bullpen. So that's pretty bad. The offense has been a bit better lately, but over the course of the season has not been great. 26 in the majors and runs scored 21st in batting average, batting 233 as a team. Outside of Vladimir Guerrero Jr., I don't have a ton of positives to uh, really, you know, bring up about this offense. 
So yeah, definitely, definitely not our favorite spot here for the Blue Jays. They're going up against the Athletics, who are coming off of obviously getting shut out there, but they're handing the ball in this one to Mitch Spence. He is yet to figure in a result, but he's sporting a 3.86 ERA coming off of a not great start there against the Seattle Mariners. He went six innings, which is good, but he gave up nine hits and four earned runs. His start before that at Tampa Bay was fantastic, though he only gave up a single hit over five and a third, and honestly, all four of his outings before that were very, very good. So going to give him a little bit, or actually all three of his outings, all three of his starts before that were very, very good. So going to give him some credit here for being a decent starter, but definitely not great. The Oakland bullpen hasn't necessarily been one to write home about. They're giving up a 250 team batting average against. So that's not great. And their offense, you all know about their offensive struggles, guys. This has been one of the worst offenses in the majors. They're 29th batting 220 as a team. They're 28th in the majors with an on-base percentage of only 292. Not going to spend a ton of time talking about the A's offense, guys. It is not good. And looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Blue Jays at minus 118, the A's at plus 100, and we see an over-under in this game of 8.5. I tend to lean a little bit towards the Oakland A's at home. I mean, I think Spence has a better chance of having a good start here than Bowden Francis does, but I don't trust either one of these guys. I don't trust either offense. We see both teams with trends towards the under, so I guess you want to take a weird flyer here on the under with two very inexperienced starters out there on the mound. You could. That doesn't sound like a good time to me, though, guys. In general, I'm staying away from this one, and if you're forcing me to bet it, I guess give me the Oakland A's. Next on the docket, we've got the Arizona Diamondbacks going on the road to take on the San Diego Padres. The Diamondbacks come into this game losers of two in a row. They're looking to split this series two games apiece. They lost 13-1 to there in game three, so that can't feel too good. They do not have a starter confirmed for this game also, which is a pretty big concern. We see that they're 13th in the majors with 24 quality starts. They're sporting a team ERA, though, of 4.49. That is not very appealing. They're 29th in the majors with a 262 batting average against. This has just not been a very good pitching team at all. Their offense also hasn't looked great in this series. They scored one, three, and four runs, respectively. So not swinging the hottest bats out there. They've been a good hitting team over the course of the season, but not so much lately. And they've definitely had some consistency problems. They are eighth in the majors in runs scored. They're 13th in slugging percentage so I mean there's some positives about this offense but not right now if you ask me and they're taking on a Padres team that's coming alive offensively they scored 13 and 10 runs respectively over the last two games they're handing the ball in this one game to Adam Mauser he is 0-0 this year with a 1.50 ERA he's going to be making his second start of the year and he looked great in his first start guys he was at the Angels he went six innings gave up two hits only a single earned run he walked four and struck out two so walking four is obviously not great but he looked very very good in that game and definitely looking at him is a plus level arm right now and the Padres bullpen while it hasn't been you know exactly the kind of bullpen you're gonna throw a parade for it hasn't been terrible it's been around league average they've been very good in terms of batting average against giving up an opposing batting average of only 235 so that's very respectable this offense has absolutely come alive right now they're up to ninth in the majors and runs scored their first in team batting average batting 261 as a squad their on base percentage is 325 like this team is just killing it at the plate right now so looking at the numbers for this game guys we see the Diamondbacks at plus 110 the Potters at minus 130 we see an over under in this game of eight and a half guys it doesn't feel great to be betting on the Padres two days in a row, but we are going to be doing it here. I think they're in a great spot. I think Mauser is going to have a great outing once again against a floundering Diamondbacks team. So give me the Padres minus 130 at home. I think the price on this game should be more around like 165 or 170. So give me the Padres. This is some solid value. Saving the best for last year, guys, on Sunday Night Baseball, we've got the Los Angeles Dodgers going on the road to take on the New York Yankees in Game 3 of their series. We saw the Dodgers win the first two games. We were leaning towards the Dodgers in both of those. We didn't have them in the pin, com have them in the pin comments, so we're not like trying to take a ton of credit here, but we were definitely leaning towards the Dodgers in both of those, and they won 11-3 to in Game 2 and 2-1 to in Game 1. They're going to be handing the ball in this game to Tyler Glasnow, who's 6-4 and four on the season with a 2.93 ERA. He's coming off of a dominant outing there at Pittsburgh, where he get, went six innings, gave only a single earned run. He had a good start there against the Mets, but if you look at his last five starts, guys, you'll notice that the Dodgers are only one in four over those starts, and they have not been against the best opponents, and he had a pretty bad start there against Cincinnati. He hasn't really faced anybody over that span that's a super scary offense, and the Yankees definitely are a scary offense. Another scary unit, though, is the Dodgers' bullpen, which is fantastic. They're only giving up a batting average of 218, so getting past the starter is not really more than half the battle. You're going to have a hard time scoring against this 
bullpen, that is for sure. The Dodgers' bats have come alive. They scored 11, 2, and 11 runs over their last three games, respectively. They're 41 and 25 on the season. They are a bit of a top-heavy, like, lineup here in terms of, you know, like, hitters and stuff like that. So that's something of a concern. They are fourth in the majors in runs scored, though, and fourth in the majors in batting average, hitting 255 as a team. They seem to have gotten out of that little slump that they were in, but they haven't exactly been facing the cream of the Yankees' rotation either. So definitely some concerns here for me on whether or not the Dodgers are going to be able to back up that amazing offensive outburst they had in Game 2. They're going to need to score some runs here against the Yankees, who have to be pretty upset about losing the first two games of the series and pretty upset about getting blown out there. Looking at the uh, Yankees starter here, we see they're going to be running Luis Gill out there, who's been amazing this year. He's 8-1 in the season with a 1.82 ERA, coming off of a dominant start there against the Minnesota Twins. He gave only a single hit over six innings. We see the Yankees are 5-0 and over his last five starts. He hasn't given up more than one earned run over any of those five starts. He's actually only given up a run in two out of his last five starts. He has been lights out. He hasn't been facing the toughest teams, for sure. Give him, give him that. But he's looked very, very good out there. The Yankees' bullpen has been pretty solidly the best bullpen in the majors all year long. So if Luis Gill has to come out, no problem at all. The bullpen will be right there to fill in the gap. And the Yankees' bats have not looked good in the first two games of the series. Having Juan Soto out has definitely been a big blow to them. But they got pretty good news. It sounds like he's going to take some swings on Sunday. So there's some chance that he'll be back for that game. It is a night game, so that gives him a little bit more time to get ready. So we'll see if we get Juan Soto in there in the line. Lineup. I'm hoping that we do because I think that will give the Yankees bats a big, big boost. I mean, obviously Soto has been insane all season long. So has Judge. So has pretty much all of the Yankees. So looking at the numbers for this game, guys, we are pretty excited about what we see. We see the Dodgers at minus 124. The Yankees at plus 106. We see an over under in this game of seven and a half. The Dodgers are 18 and 13 on the road, which is respectable. But the Yankees are 21 and 10 at home. And guys, I do not think we see the Yankees get swept in this series. We've got Luis Gill out there on the mound. I know not super high on what I've been seeing from Glasnow lately, necessarily. He's been going up against some pretty bad teams, and he's been having some success, but not like wild success. So long story short here, guys, give me the Yankees plus 106. This is definitely going in the pinned common. I think there's a very, very good shot. We see them bounce back and get the win in this game, especially if we see Soto back in the game. So yeah, give me the Yankees plus 106 in this one. I think this is a great spot for them. That's all the games we have for today, guys. Hit that like button for good luck on all of your bets and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description to check out stumpthespread.com and we'll see you guys tomorrow for more sports betting action.